A massive increase in the number of migrants seeking asylum is putting a strain on resources in El Paso, Texas. More than 2,000 people a day are arriving to be processed, and several local leaders say that it is unsustainable. Lilia Luciano spoke with some of the migrants seeking a new home in the U.S. After an 18-day trek spanning more than 2,200 miles, you can see the transformation in Ingrid Lopez's expression as she takes account of what her family has survived on the way here. Por el sacrificio, desde que nosotros salimos de nuestro país, todo lo que nosotros pasamos. And the sacrifices she and her husband, Wilston, have made without work and fleeing political persecution to offer their 13-year-old Emily a safe life. After crossing several borders, they boarded a bus in Mexico with about 40 others. But instead of the freedom to the north, they say the drivers delivered them and hundreds of others into the hands of armed kidnappers. The fear piled on, locked in a warehouse for days with more threats than food, praying to survive. Logramos escapar todas las personas. Starving, they say the group managed to escape by breaking down the doors and running to a neighboring town for help. Then her smile fades, remembering a reality as cold as the crowded floors they slept on at the immigration processing center. You felt that the experience having been kidnapped by these criminal organizations in Mexico felt the same as when you finally crossed and were detained. They were finally released and came to this shelter as they make their way to Baltimore to await their asylum hearing. But with local shelters at capacity, others wait for those next steps in the freezing cold. So what we're doing city manager Tommy Gonzalez says the city has already spent $9.5 million and needs millions more from the federal government to shelter, direct, and where needed, transport migrants arriving here. All hands need to be on deck. Let's keep the migrants' needs in, in mind. They're not a project, they're people. And the city of El Paso has learned that FEMA will uh, disperse another $6 million to handle those costs that are related to managing this crisis. And local officials, and marie tell me here that they hope that the federal government could also open up Fort Bliss as a shelter. That's something that's been done for previous refugee crises, and that is desperately needed if Title 42 is set to expire next week. As you can see, people uh, have lined up in parts of this town because the shelters are full. And I will tell you, I am freezing. I've been here for just a few minutes and I'm shaking. It is bone chilling how the cold feels. Yeah, it's, I mean, I was going to ask you, what are you seeing there on the ground? And it is literally on the ground. There are people sleeping on the ground. Uh, can we talk about Title 42? Because there's been this sort of back and forth, back and forth um, between the Biden administration and the courts. Where do things stand right now? You know, the thing about Title 42 is Title 42 is a public health policy that was implemented during the Trump administration. The goal of it, like so many other policies, was to curb the spread of COVID. Uh, the idea was, you know, close the border to people seeking asylum, people who have a right to seek asylum, people who are fleeing, uh, as you heard from these families, uh, political persecution, religious persecution. I mean, there's all of these different categories for which people can seek asylum in the United States. Some countries uh, are now allowed, as is the case with Nicaragua, to come here and await for their asylum hearing while here in the U.S. But because of Title 42, because of this limit uh, at the ports of entry being essentially close to other asylum seekers, many people are expelled directly to Mexico. So in terms of where it stands, uh, right now, a judge last month ruled that Title 42 is basically illegal, that you can't continue this policy, seeing that the pandemic has essentially ended uh, by many definitions. But 19 Republican-led states are fighting that. They are appealing that decision, and there's a judge uh, that needs to rule by tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, a little disoriented here, by tomorrow on whether or not 
Title 42 will stay or not. If that judge rules against them, they're asking uh, for some time for another seven day period after the expiration date to hopefully take it to the Supreme Court. And the Biden administration, too, is uh, fighting it in court, not because they want to keep Title 42 in place, although in a way it serves the federal government because the states are not prepared at this point to handle the increase of people who will come uh, seeking asylum. But they're they're trying uh, through the courts, too, to maintain that Title 42 as a policy is legal so that it perhaps may be used in the future. Wow. And then there's, there's all this legal wrangling. And then meantime, there are people just hurling themselves into the unknown, hoping that whatever the future brings, it will be better than where they came from. Uh, Lilia, thank you very much.